Hello and welcome to our session, Postgraduate Psychology at Macquarie University. My name's Hannah and I'm currently in my honours year of our Bachelor of Psychology degree. And I'll be speaking with our course directors for our four postgraduate psychology master's programs. So we have the widest range of offerings in New South Wales, uh, including the only master's programs for both clinical neuropsychology and organisational psychology in the state. Um, so depending on your areas of interest, this is a great way to to have a look at uh, the career options and just kind of the course structure and entry requirements. So hopefully we can answer some of your questions today. Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of the land. We're currently on Wallamadigal land of the Darug Nation. I'm now joined by Dr. Heather Francis, who is our course director for our Masters of Clinical Neuropsychology. Thanks so much for joining us today. So I'm really excited to talk about this one because it's my area of interest, but I guess some people may not know what neuropsychology is. So can you tell us a little bit about what it involves? Yeah, sure. Um, so neuropsychology is a sub-discipline of psychology with uh, additional training in understanding brain behaviour relationships. Um, and I guess when I'm talking about behaviour, I mean anything from cognition, but also behaviour, um, emotion regulation, mood, understanding how different regions of the brain affect things like memory, attention, mood, and then also understanding what happens when things go wrong with the brain. So someone might have a stroke or a neurological condition like multiple sclerosis, um, and it's about understanding the patterns of cognitive change and mood change that go hand in hand with a lot of those neurological disorders. Yeah, so I guess because it's that specialisation, I guess some people may want to know um, what kind of graduate roles do people often go into from um, that master's in clinical neuropsych? Yeah, so um, the majority of neuropsychologists probably work in the hospital setting. So we'd see inpatients and outpatients um, and be sort of, you know, integrated within either neurology wards or um, neurosurgery, um, brain injury, rehabilitation units. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, usually we'll sort of tend to subspecialise within that. Um, either to sort of paediatrics are dealing with children who mm -hmm. have either a specific learning disorder or intellectual uh, disability or um, paediatric epilepsy, for example. Um, and then uh, in the sort of more adult sphere, it can be in sort of more general neurology, um, seeing a range of different neurological conditions or in older adults, differential diagnosis of dementia. So understanding, for example, how the most common dementia, Alzheimer's disease, mm -hmm. differs in, in its presentations from, say, a frontotemporal dementia or yeah. some of the other movement disorders that affect thinking. Yeah, I guess it's really good to know that even though it's a specialised field, there's still so many options that you can go into. Yes. Which it's, is really it's good. It's very diverse. Yeah. Um, I should say that, you know, apart from the hospital setting, neuropsychologists will often end up in research as well, either sort of affiliated with universities or other major research institutions. Um, and also, you know, in private practice um, and not just seeing patients clinically in private practice, but often going a little bit further to be medico legal. Mm -hmm. um, so that might be, as an example, someone's been involved in a car accident and that's affected their ability to work and they're seeking compensation, um, doing a really thorough assessment of their cognition to... Yeah. to um, that would stand up in court, yeah. essentially. Mm. Okay, so um, in terms of the master's program specifically, what do those entry requirements look like? Are they Because I know we spoke about mm. them um, in our previous interviews with um, organisational and professional psych course directors. What does that kind of look like for neuropsych? So it's very similar to the other programs for neuropsych. Um, where you need to have an honours degree um, and a very com it's very competitive. Um, so having a very strong academic transcript um, but we also look at references mm -hmm. and relevant work experience. Yeah okay so I guess 
with that, what might draw someone to neuropsychology um, specifically rather than kind of the other master's programs? Um, so I think it would be obviously having an interest in how the brain works and, and what happens when, when things aren't working. Mm -hmm. um, but also really, I mean, the great thing about neuropsychology is you get to work with a range of disciplines. So I'm in a neurology department. I get to work with neurologists and neurosurgeons and all the allied health, like the physios and the occupational therapists and the speech therapists. We work together to really improve the experience of the patient and their family. Yeah. Uh, I love that aspect of my job. And often where, as neuropsychologists, the specialty that, that gets to spend a lot of time with a patient really delve into what's going on for mm. them in a way that I think a lot of the other professionals in the hospital setting don't necessarily get time to do. Yeah. Um, I think that's really rewarding. Yeah. Mm. So I guess in that field, obviously, that's kind of the role of the clinical neuropsychologist. But mm. for someone who is in that undergraduate degree still and is looking for that work experience for the entry requirements, what can I think mm. this is a lot of my friends as well like have questions about this what specific neuropsychology experience can people look for for that yeah so we we recognize that it's really difficult to get experience with people with neurological conditions yeah. simply by nature of that it's a very sensitive area um but you know what we would look for is so you can either seek out work as an ra with any sort of research studies where they're looking at any sort of condition or any sort of um, cognitive testing mm -hmm. um, at, and then other sorts of relevant work experience would be anything that involves even basic counselling. So Lifeline is a good example. Settings where you can demonstrate empathy. A lot of people will end up working in, for example, behaviour support. Um, a lot of people will have experience, say, working with kids. Um, but really, I guess what you'd be wanting to try and get out of that work experience is a good reference that can speak to your empathy, your ability to relate to people in difficult circumstances, mm -hmm. um, and also sort of a bit of independence in, in, and motivation and drive, uh, that sort of thing, because those are additional skills that are needed to succeed in a master's program apart from the clinical skills. Yeah, and I guess mm. the common theme throughout all of these is your passion for it and that you want to pursue that specifically, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So just before we wrap up, yeah. um, I guess I wanted to ask, you did mention a little bit before, but what specifically do you love about neuropsychology? What led you to become an academic and a clinician in that field? Well, the reason I think I've, I've become an academic is that I love teaching neuropsychology. I, I find, you know, following the students' progress over the masters and their growth in knowledge uh, really just um, fun to be a part of. Um, and then I also love that being an academic, you get to be part of your job is to know the latest research. And then that it helps inform my clinical work and make me a better practitioner. So yeah. um, ac academia is great for that. Yeah, and I guess having that that mix of the academia and then mm. also going and working in clinical practice kind of yeah. mixes it up a little bit as well. And I feel like that would be kind of cool. Yeah, and you do find so there there does seem to be quite a demand for neuropsychologists even without the additional PhD to be involved in, in research. So we do find a lot of our graduates will end up doing a bit of clinical and a bit of sort of working in those sort of research settings. So yeah. it's, it's definitely a, a possibility on yeah. graduation. Lovely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Heather. Oh, it's been great. Thank you.